Okay, this video here is going to be on using decoys, and I've shot several bucks using decoys. Uh, I've also spooked a lot of deer using decoys in Michigan because does come into decoys. Uh, they kind of, they're kind of spooky. They'll come in, they'll get five yards, and and they'll stomp and put their head down, do the old head bob deal. And if they don't get a reaction movement after a few minutes, they'll usually snort and spook and run away and make all kinds of noise for a few minutes. But uh, this is a this brand here is a carry light. And I carry them, when this thing's all taken apart, it fits nice and perfectly in this military duffel bag. I've got a little cinch here, so I cinch it together, and it's got backpack straps so I can easily carry it. And typically, when I'm using this, I use it as a doe decoy. Every buck I've shot using this decoy, I've used it as a doe decoy. Because bucks typically are going to come in, especially when it's close to the rut, they're going to come into a doe decoy before they're going to come into a buck decoy. Why come in to fight as opposed to come in to breed and check a doe for receptivity? Uh, but when I have, when I first bought it and I was using it as a buck, and that's when I was spooking a lot of does with it, come in and they didn't want anything to do with it and they'd spook and snort. Um, but when I did have bucks come in, it came with an eight point rack and I'd have four points and six points come out and see it and they'd actually turn and run away because it was too dominant of a deer for them. Uh, and keep in mind in Michigan, you, you just don't see a lot of big bucks. So I trimmed the antlers down to a four point and then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna use it as a doe. So I typically run it without the antlers at all. Uh, but all these parts on here, when you first buy a decoy, and this is a 3D decoy, looks the same, you know, you can move around it and it's got a body profile from any direction. But you have to trim all the parts. And I, take, I took a razor knife and I did a lot of trimming. It probably took me an hour to trim all these parts so that I could put it together relatively quietly in the field. Because if you don't trim the parts, I mean snapping this neck onto the body and putting not necessarily these legs on, but these hind legs where you gotta fit them into a joint and then spin them 90 degrees, it just made a lot of noise. So I trimmed that stuff so it's nice and easy uh, to put together and, and quiet. And it doesn't take as long, obviously. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something kind of cool. I'm gonna actually have this painted by a taxidermist and I'm gonna have it painted so it's a lot more realistic. I just decided to do that this year. Uh, you can actually twist the ears different directions. You can have one going one way and one another way. Uh, but de decoys work, work great. Um, again, I do not hunt field edges in Michigan. So the bucks that I've shot using this were actually in the timber. Actually, they were in timber areas. They were not in bedding areas. They were, they were uh, in the timber areas. And the first one was in the late 80s. And I was actually hunting in a spot where I saw this buck coming down a ridge. And I saw him there two times in a row going down that ridge. So there was no place up on that ridge where I could set up a tree. In fact, it was not even on the property I had permission to hunt. So I set up a decoy and, uh, and the, ne the next evening when I hunted there, that buck, same buck, he had a regular routine down that ridge. He had a rub line up there. And um, I, just, I just did a grunt call when I vi visually seen him and he turned and saw the decoy and came right over to it. There's a couple things you need to know about decoys when you're setting them up for using. First of all, something like this, because it's got a lot of ridges on this where the hair is, it's really easy to leave human odor on this. So I, I will wash this before season and that bag there is kept scent free as well, but I will only handle it with my scent lock gloves on it. So I'm not leaving any odor on it. When you set up a decoy, you always wanna set it upwind of you. Now, I don't worry about wind and getting winded, but if you set it, if you do, if you don't have a good scent regimen and you set a decoy up downwind of you, obviously the deer are gonna come in and they're gonna be downwind of you, so that's not what you want. So you always set up a decoy upwind of you and you always set it up about 15 to 20, whatever your comfort shooting distance is. I've actually hunted with a couple guys that they were comfortable shooting at 35 yards. They liked shooting a farther distance because then they had a less chance of getting picked in the tree because the deer were farther away. I like, you know, 15 to 20 yards. So I set mine up 15 to 20 yards because typically with a decoy, if you're gonna get a shot, it's gonna be right at the decoy. So 
set it up upwind of you at whatever your comfort distance is, put it on a little mound or something. You want it in the most high visibility spot you could have where deer going by in the area can visually see it. And then if you see something going by, you make a vocal noise or you hit a grunt call or you hit a doe bleed if you got it as a doe and that way it'll get their attention and they'll see it. And also never set up a decoy where it's facing the tree you're sitting in. You always want to set up a decoy where it's at about a 45 degree from you. If, you, if this is the tree, you want it at about 45 degrees. You want it right where you you want it right where it's simple to pick up your bow and take a shot, but you want the decoy facing away from you. Because I've had does come into decoys when I first started using them, and I had them somewhat facing the tree, and they would come in and they kept looking because the doe's not, or the deer's not moving, the decoy's not moving. So they're wondering, well, what the hell's that deer so intensely looking at? So then they start looking in the direction of the deer to see if there's, what the danger is or why she's so intense looking in a specific direction. So you're more apt to get picked. So always have it looking away from you. And keep in mind, when you're setting up a doe decoy, a buck is typically gonna come in to a doe decoy from the rear. A buck is going to come into a buck decoy typically from the front so it's because it's a confrontational you know he'll put his ears back and he'll come in kind of sideways but he'll come nose face to face those they come in from a rear because they want the scent so put it at your comfort distance upwind of you always make sure it can be broadside it can be it can be facing sideways or somewhat of an angle you just don't want it facing the tree um, and again, high vis area. Now this particular one, I've got a, a tail wagger on. I have two of these decoys and there are some states where you can use some form of a motion. Um, I've talked to guys that have put strings onto some form of a tail or they've used a little piece of a, uh, tissue, a white tissue or something that's going to wave in the wind if you got a little bit of wind. But this tail wagger is awesome. I bought this quite a few years ago. And I actually shot a buck using this tail wagger and I'll, I'll never forget it because he was coming through a weed field. The weeds were probably, yeah, they were probably that high a CRP field. And he was going, he probably 60, 70 yards. And when he got perfectly perpendicular to the decoy, that tail wagged, because I had it on every 16 seconds. This tail wagger, you can set it for every eight seconds or every 16 seconds. And I had it on 16 seconds. So in a 16 second time gap, he went from A to B. And when he got to that spot, that tail wagged. And I mean, he was looking this way and this decoy was directly 90 degrees to his left. I was getting ready to actually make a, make a doe bleed. And when that tail wagged, I mean, his head turned immediately. He turned and looked at that decoy and just beelined right over to that doe decoy and I shot him. Um, but the tail wagger, I don't even know if they still make them anymore, but that tail wagger is absolutely awesome you got to cut a big hole in the bottom to put it on um, but they also come with just a tail obviously and the tail the tails that these come with you can have them down you can have them at an angle you can put them however you want but typically down is what you're going to want it because down is going to be a, a the deer is in a calm state of mind and that's one thing you'll notice that's really cool about a tail wagger when you're looking at a doe or a buck and if he, if they are like looking at something like, you know, they lift their head up and they maybe heard something over there just before they, they put their head back down, they will almost always wag their tail. That's, that is a, everything is calm, back to normal, put their tail back down. So tail wagger not only hugely garners their attention from a distance because they can see that movement, especially if it's calm and it's not windy. It's also a sign that everything is calm, so they feel more comfortable moving into it. Um, but if you're hunting in a pressured state, and there's lots of pressured states in the Northeast, uh, be very cautious, because if you use a decoy in an area where you're gonna have a lot of deer, you know, if you, a lot of guys hunt field edges, you put it out in a field, you're gonna have a lot of does come into the field first, if it's an evening hunt. Odds are really, really high. Does are gonna come over to it, and they are gonna stand around it, three or four does, fawn or two, and they're gonna look at it, do the head bob, and they're gonna spook from it. And when they spook, they're not just gonna leave, they're gonna snort, stomp, 
make all kinds of racket. So it's going to be detrimental to the rest of your hunt. Uh, and that's about all I can think of on that. I'm really looking forward to getting this thing painted. And what I'm going to paint it to look like is this right here. This is a Montana decoy. And when they first came out with these, it was quite a few years ago. Um, they sent me a couple because um, I was writing articles and I had written a couple books. And uh, this thing looks like a deer. I mean, you put this thing out at any distance at all, this looks like a doe. Well, as you can see, these, uh, these does look realistic. As you can see, these does. As you can see, these Montana decoys look very realistic. And again, we've got a rear doe estrus and a buck. And I have this set up right now like a buck's coming up behind this doe. Her rear end is kind of bending down like she's in the breeding position and he's standing behind her. And the buck comes with a tail. So if it's got any wind or anything like that, this thing here flops around pretty nice and it's a very realistic tail. Uh, the rear is just something that you can have, um, like if you're setting up like the other decoy I showed you in the video, the, the standard doe, you can actually put the rear at the very butt end of the doe 90 degrees. So you got the doe like this, and then the rear is going to be like this. Boom, boom. That way if a deer does circle around it, they're still going to see something that gives it somewhat of a 3D look instead of spinning around it and then you know, all of a sudden it disappears because it's skinny, it's not 3D. So uh, these decoys work really well. Um, you just have to put them a little closer to the tree because when the deer do get close to them, it draws them from a bigger distance because they're so realistic looking. They, I mean, they're pictures of deer for God's sake. So, so they're very realistic looking. But as they get closer, they you can just kind of tell they're kind of puzzled because they don't have a 3, 3D look to them. And it depends on where you're at. Yeah, you know, out west, they come to it a lot quicker than they will in a pressured area, which is normal for anything. So anyway, very realistic looking. Um, and you can move these around however you want. They're very easy to move. If you want to set the buck up like he's coming in, checking her out, you can do that. So it's uh, real simple, real simple to move these things around and they pack up, they take up zero space. Uh, they weigh, I don't know, four or five ounces maybe. And they'll fit right in your backpack. They're about that thick when they're folded up and about that big around. It's because this is just a piece of fabric. This is just fabric. So basically what they did is they took a picture of a real doe and they just imprinted that picture onto the fabric. That's why this looks so realistic. Literally, if I had this at a distance and you saw it, you'd think there was a doe standing there. And so this is what I'm gonna paint that to look like, because obviously that carry light, to me, doesn't look like a deer. I would know that from a distance, that's not a deer. But if a buck is, you know, testosterone levels high, he's gonna come into it, because to a buck it's a 3D, 3D deer, and he's gonna come in and check it out. But, the downside of the Montana, the great side of the Montana, is it looks, it looks exactly like a deer from a distance, so they're going to come in relatively close. But if they come in from an angle, what happens is this doesn't have a, it's not 3D. So eventually they're going to get at a spot where there was a deer here, and now it's just a straight line piece of, of line. So that's the negative of it. But uh, in the right situations, if you're using those in timber, obviously not out in a field where a deer is gonna circle it, but if you're using it in timber where they're coming directly to it, you know, you definitely wanna put it broadside. You want it dead sideways so that you've got the biggest visual possible. And they're gonna come into it and probably if you put it, you put it a little tighter to the tree, that way, let's say you put it 10 yards from the tree, upwind of the tree, they come in and they get 10 or 15 yards and they start to get a little leery of it because they start moving around a little bit and they see it's not, doesn't have any 3D to it, you'll still have a shot opportunity. So out of Montana, you wanna put it tighter to your hunting location. With this one here, they're gonna come right to it. 
because it's it's 3D. No matter which way they come into it from, it's going to have a shape. And I can't think, oh, with this here, because this is fabric, uh, I also, this here rolls up. Basically, it's like those tents where you, you have you have to kind of turn them, twist them, and they roll up. So it, it's about that big around, tripled over, rolls up into a little small circle. And then I keep that in a scent lock bag. Actually, I keep it in a scent lock head cover. So this is an old scent lock head cover. That I've been using scent lock for years. And this thing, when it's rolled up, will fit right in that head cover to keep it scent free. And I will wash this before season and I will deabsorb this before season. So both of these work really, really well. This is something that's nice if you're gonna do a lot of, if you're gonna cover a lot of distance, because that's a pain in the butt if you gotta carry it very far. Because that's, that's cumbersome. It's extremely cumbersome. You're carrying your bow, you're carrying your backpack, you might be carrying some sticks. Yeah, if you're not a saddle guy, you're carrying a tree stand. Um, that's really, really cumbersome. Uh, but I, if I have my option of hunting over that or hunting over this, I would definitely hunt over that. Uh, but for going in long distances, this will fit in your backpack, doesn't take up any space, doesn't weigh anything. Super easy to set up too. This one sets up really easy and from a distance this looks awesome. And that's all I have on decoys and we'll push her over. Thank you. Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and please like and subscribe.